Hi everybody, welcome back to Mando Lessons. My name is Baron Collins Hill. This week's lesson, we're looking at these two mandolins. In a lot of ways, they're very similar. In a couple ways, they're a little bit different. So uh, I'm gonna be talking about the differences between the F-hole style and the modern oval-hole style mandolins uh, and giving you a sound sample. So, both of these instruments were built by Tom Ellis uh, and his crew in his shop in Austin, Texas. If, you're, uh, if you've been to this channel before, you've seen this mandolin many, many times. I've owned this since 2009 when it was built. I bought both of these mandolins with my own money. There's no uh, funny business going on here. This is not an ad for Tom Ellis. I just love the instruments that he builds. And uh, yeah, so this mandolin, built in 2009, F-holes. Uh, the bracing on this mandolin is standard kind of F-hole, uh, F-style, or A5 style bracing. It's parallel bracing, which means there's a brace that runs here and a brace that runs here. It has the elevated neck, which I'll uh, pick up in the, the close-up camera here. So it's got the elevated fingerboard. It connects at the 15th fret. And yeah, carved top and back, uh, spruce top, maple backsides and neck. I've got uh, an armrest and a tone guard on both instruments just to keep them as similar as possible. I actually restrung both of these instruments about two weeks ago just so they would both have a fresh set of the same uh, kind of strings. I'm using EJ75s from D'Addario, um, just kind of their medium heavy gauge. I like a slightly heavier gauge uh, string so I can push the mandolins a little harder. I don't recommend that on more delicately built uh, vintage instruments, but for these modern ones they can totally handle it I'm using the same pick on both instruments, so they're really as close as I can get. Uh, with this mandolin, also built by Tom Ellis in 2010, so one year later, uh, the biggest difference is it's got an oval hole. So rather than the F holes, it's got the one big round hole in the middle. This is X-braced, which many uh, modern oval hole mandolins are, so it's got a brace that runs this way and a brace that runs this way. Also, going back to the close-up camera, it's got um, the same elevated fingerboard, which is not um, the same as a lot of vintage oval hole mandolins like uh, Gibson was building before the in, in the early 1920s and before. Um, those had a flush fingerboard to the top. This also joins the neck uh, at the 15th fret, or sorry, joins the body at the 15th fret, where a lot of vintage oval holes join at the 12th. So it's a modern built uh, oval hole mandolin in many respects. It's pretty much identical in a lot of ways except for the holes, the bracing, and probably some graduation of the top. Um, to my F hold uh, Ellis and let's jump into how these sound. So I'll play uh, a little on both and you can get a sense of what the differences sound like.
so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed uh, getting a sense of how these instruments sound different. Maybe you have a preference. Let me know in the comments. I love them both. Um, I find this mandolin to be a little more bluegrassy. This mandolin to have a little kind of richer overtone sound, but maybe not excelling at the chop as much. I love this for fiddle tunes. Love this for bluegrass. And I think they both could do either. Um, there are musicians that have played bluegrass with oval hole mandolins in the past, and there are clearly a lot of musicians who play fiddle tunes, old time and Irish music with f hold mandolins. Really, it's just down to what you prefer. I feel very lucky to have both of these instruments uh, to play. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.